Hello there crafties! This is me again Nisa and welcome back to my channel. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how I drafted this basic bodice pattern of my son's school uniform vest. Without further ado, let's get right to it. First, we need to do is to get the body measurements. What I did is I took his exact bust, waist, and hip circumference, then added 10 inches on each measurement for the ease. I did this because my son is in his adolescent age, which means that he could grow rapidly, thus giving enough size allowance for his one year worth of growth. I'm using a Christmas gift wrap as drafting paper since this was the only huge enough paper that is available to me. Anyway, you can use any other paper that you like as long as it could fit the size of your project. First thing we will do is to draw about 1 inch from the edge on these sides. These lines will be the basis for our proceeding measurements. This is along the shoulder part and this is for the center front. To avoid confusion since we are putting front and back darts on one front pocket in our bodies, we're gonna be drafting the front part first, then right after will be the back part. Let's start with the shoulder. My son's shoulder measurement is 13 inches. We'll be using only half of it so it's 6.5 inches. His desired strap width is 3.5 inches. From the side end of the shoulder, we need to mark 1 inch down, since normally, human's shoulder is slanted in its nature. However, when your project is for kid size, you can up to mark it only 1 inch lower. Since my son is already taller than me, so I could already apply measurements that are for adults in all of my future projects for him. Next thing we need to do is to make the bust line. To make it, we will use half of the armhole measurement. From the side end of the shoulder, we will mark 10 inches down, then make a horizontal line. This becomes the bust line. Next, we're gonna draft is the hip line. To do it, we will use the length. His is 21 inches. Then again, draw a horizontal line along it. To draft the waistline, we will just get the distance between the bust line to the hip line, then divide it in half. This becomes the waistline. To make the armhole, we need to apply the chest measurement on the bust line. His chest circumference is 40 inches. We're gonna use a quarter of it, which is 10 inches. I then connected it to the shoulder using a French curve. I added 1 half inch on the center front part for the bottom allowance. To draft the neckline, I marked 10 inches, which is his desired neck depth, down from the neck base part, then connected them. I'm using a hip curve to add a little curve to it, but you can also use a straight ruler if you want it straight. This area is where the first button will be placed. Next, we're gonna apply is the waist measurement. Again, this is the base of our measurement since this part is the allowance for button placement. This is 36 inches. A quarter of it is 9 inches. Since we will be putting one half inch dart later, so we will add it here on the side. Next, we're gonna apply is the hip measurement, which is 43 inches. Again, 1 fourth of it we're gonna use, so 10.75 inches plus 1 half inch for the dart. We can now connect points of chest, waist, and hip line. It's now time to make the front dart. Again, the measurement starts here. To make the front dart, I drafted 3.5 inches from the center front, then marked 1 fourth inch side by side to complete the one half inch dart. We also need to mark the same on the hip line. On the bust line, I also marked 3.5 inches, then marked one inch down. I then connected it down to the 3.5 inch markings I made earlier. I extended it beyond the hip line because we will be adding the length of the front part of the vest later. I then went ahead and connected the side points to the bust point to finish making the dart legs. For the front weld pocket placement, I place it just about one half inch below the waistline. As I have observed in most garment pocket, the standard opening is usually five inches wide. Since we are placing it through the dart, we will add one half inch 
so it becomes 5.5 inches wide. Its height will be 3 fourth inch. You can also make it in half inch if you want. To add more slope to the center front bottom part of the vest, I marked 1 and 1 half inch up and 1 and 1 half inch down from the hip line. I decided to end the slope about 3 fourth inch from the dart. Again, you can choose to make your slope shorter or longer depending on your desired style. I then connected the two remaining points using a hip curve. We are now finished drafting our front bodice pattern. Let's now move on to the back. These parts will be the same with the front pattern. While this line becomes the center back, this will be considered as the length. So the remaining parts that we will be drafting are the back neckline, armhole, and the dart. Let's start with the neckline. From the base of the neck, we will mark 1 inch lower, then trace it to the shoulder using French curve. For the armhole, I just manipulated the curve to be lesser bent than the front armhole since naturally, back armholes have lesser depth than the front. To make the dart, I divided the measurement of the waist into two, marked its center, then marked 1 fourth inch on both sides did the same markings along the hip line, then drafted 4.75 inches on the bust line, then matched the 4.75 inches mark points. I connected the apex point to the legs all the way down to the back body's length. This is now our back bodies. Let's start with the back bodies. I placed my pattern on top of another piece of paper, then traced the edges of the back. It's always convenient to put some weights or rather pinning the pattern to the paper to keep it in place. To transfer the darts, using my pen's tip, I punched holes through dart points then marked through it. I then created the darts same way I did earlier. This side will be the center back and the center fold where I'll be cutting the fabric on this side on fold. So no seam allowance will be needed on this side. I added one half inch seam allowance along the neck, shoulder, armhole and the side part. Then added one and one half inch hem allowance along the hip line. You would want to copy by reflecting the angle of the side end part so that the tip of the hem won't show when folding it later. To be able to draft side parts of front bodies, we need to trim out first the back neckline, this angle right here, and the back armhole to fully expose its side parts. Then using a new piece of paper, we will do the same process we did earlier. Tray side edges. Then transfer the dart and pocket markings. I added one half inch seam allowance to the shoulder and neckline. For the front center part where the buttons will be placed, I will add one half inch folding allowance on this side. To perfectly copy the angles on these parts, I folded it along the edge, measured one inch at the back, then traced a line. Unlike the back hip line part where I added a hem allowance, I'll be putting a facing on this part, so one half inch seam allowance will be added here.
since I'll be securing these sides of folding allowance with an overlocker, so no seam or hem allowance will be needed. That means we need to trim out one half inch on these parts by doing so. Let's start with the front armhole. The facings that we will be drafting will be 2 inches in width. Using scrap paper, I traced the side of the armhole, then measured and traced 2 inches along the shoulder and the side part. I then continued to mark down 2 inches from the edge, then did it all the way around the curve of the armhole. Using my ruler, I connected the points then cut. I simply repeated process for the other remaining parts. So that concludes our today's episode. Hope you enjoyed and learned something from this. If you do, you might want to consider leaving a like and please subscribe if you haven't yet. Thank you and hope to see you in my next one.